Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Heart House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I'm a little late in making my April Makes video. I apologize. It has been very busy. Very, very busy at work. It has been consuming hours into my <laughs> life and uh, it's been hard to get crafting done in general, let alone finding time to talk about it. But alas, I am here today to find time to talk about it. So first up, um, what I'd like to share with you is that I have finished nothing in the month of April. No projects have been finished whatsoever. I have made progress but nothing is finished. So I'm going to share with you some of that progress that I made over the month of April. And I'm going to start with some spinning. So I have been working on some drop spindle spinning on my Turkish drop spindle. And this is the third ounce, yes third ounce. So I have eight ounces total, four ounces in one colorway and four ounces in another colorway. And the plan is to spin all of that up on my drop spindle. And what I'm doing is chain plying it as I go. So all of this yarn on here is already plied. Fancy. <laughs> uh, so I have here the first ounce that I spun and this was spun looks like in March according to my notes this is in the rambling rose colorway so it's shades of blue and dusty pinks and purple where the colors have blended and it's really nice and the second ounce is in autumn mist so what I'm doing to try to keep my interest is every ounce I'm switching back and forth between the two colorways. And yeah, so I have two ounces completely done. This is working into the third ounce here. And this is back in the Rambling Rose colorway. And I just love this deep purple bit in here. Pop of pink. Yep. So I'm making progress. It is slow progress. I'm not picking up my spindle as often as I would like to. But uh, yeah, it's just been mostly hanging out. I've spun pretty recently over the last couple of days. Most of this progress has been in the last few days, but uh, yeah, it's still going. I'm still working on it. I'm still very interested in it. So yeah. Another work in progress. I don't know if I've even shown this to you yet. Maybe I have, maybe I cast it on this month. I don't even know what's going on, y'all, in my own craft room. <laughs> anyway, uh, I am using Knit Picks palette in the colorway Shoal, which is this beautiful teal color. And I am knitting another Musselberg hat. I knit one of these hats for my mom for Christmas. She wanted a ponytail hat. So for mom, I, um, you know, cast on a number of stitches here to have an opening for a ponytail to come out the top. But this time I'm making one with it closed in like a uh, regular hat. And this one is going to be for me. Yep. Uh, yeah. I'm enjoying it. I needed something that was just plain knitting. Um, 
no thought to it, no color changing with yarns or anything like that. And so this is pretty, seen some pretty good progress. Um, I have been recording video for um, featured videos as well as like a garden vlog. So I have been recording. It's just been, you know, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't finished projects. So the videos aren't ready to be posted till they're actually finished. Uh, but I've been working on this while editing those um, videos as I work on them. So that's been a good project for that. All my bags are fall themed. I do really love fall. But this is a project you have seen before my skirt that I'm working on out of some cotton yarn. And I am now on to the uh, I think the third section is the last section of the skirt. Um, yeah, so it's knit from the top down and I have not sewn in the elastic yet. I would like to do that actually and try down to get a sense of the length because you guys, this doesn't look very long. So yeah but i've been measuring so the pattern instructions say like knit until it measures this long and then do another increase row and so i've been doing the measurements but uh yeah you can see the color shifting here into some darker blues and it is also into uh blending into the darker gray as well it's just you can't you can't see it as well as the blue but yeah I think it is coming along nicely although since I have done this last increase it is a lot of stitches per round so I'm not super motivated to work on it especially since look at all of this yarn I still have I was worried I was gonna run out of yardage <sighs> I'm starting to feel like I could have just used one of these balls I don't know you don't know till it's it's finished right so it's still going I've still been working on it it's just a boring knit at this point with long rounds <sighs> and because the yarn is splitty the plies aren't actually really they're not twisted together they're just four strands together and so it's really easy to miss one of the strands and then I have to tink back and then re-knit so I kind of have to watch my knitting when I'm working on that project which makes it less, what's the phrase, potato chippy. Um, it's not as easy to work on while watching television because I have to watch my knitting. But uh, it still has seen progress. It is certainly a lot farther than it was before. And hey, you know what? Slow progress is still progress. And then one day, I don't know I was actually inspired to work on some crafts and what did I do I wanted a new project duh <laughs> so um, I am trying to work on gift knitting throughout the year so that I'm not swamped come Christmas time so this is intended to be a gift and I cast on a sock. I love knitting socks. They are pretty awesome. And I am using up some scrap yarn um, because the person I was thinking of, the uh, self-striping yarn that I have just didn't scream that person's name to me. 
So I thought, well, I have some leftover yarn, lots of it, filling up a pegboard over there with balls of yarn. And so I picked out these three colors. And together, the three of them uh, comes together to be about 100 grams, which is great. And so I'm using the dark color. Uh, the dark is, oh shoot, sorry, hang on. Uh, the dark color is, hmm, I don't know. I want to say Leading Men Fiber Arts, but I could be wrong about that. I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, but I use that up on the cuff here and it's just, oh, it's beautiful. Um, and then I went into the self-striping yarn and the self-striping yarn is from Craftsy. They don't sell yarn anymore, do they? Do they? I know Craftsy went away and became Blueprint, and then it became Craftsy again. <laughs> and I know they do their classes, but I don't know that they sell yarn anymore. Anyway, this is where I got this. Uh, and I'm doing um, Hermione's Everyday Sock stitch pattern, which is just knits and pearls. But I wanted something a little more, something with a little bit of texture, but you can still see the stripes on. And then this light color is from Knit Picks. It's a very soft, variegated gray and cream. I've been using this for a lot of the gnome beards when I knit gnomes. And so... I'm now going to be striping, so this is manual striping now, between the white, the, the light gray and the dark gray. And of course, this is where I put this project down. Because it wasn't potato chippy anymore. This is all one yarn. Now I'm manually having to switch colors and I got bored. Not bored, that's the wrong word. I didn't feel like I had the headspace to keep track of this. <sighs> Y'all, I really don't like admitting this, but my crafting mojo is at a low, low, low. Because I'm just consumed by work at this time. There are many big projects, new leadership. It is, it is a big ball of stress at work right now. And that stress comes home with me. And sometimes I can just knit it out. And other times I'm just like, all I can do is be a zombie sitting on my couch staring at a television. And like that's all I am capable of at the end of the day because I'm just zapped of all of my energy and motivation. This too shall pass, but um, I'm very thankful to have a job. I'm very thankful to have some quite a lot of security in my job that even with change in leadership and whatnot, I have protections. So, you know, I'm going to be able to pay my bills and put food on the table and have health insurance. And that is all great. But these meetings and meetings and meetings, talking about things and making big changes. 
is heavy work and it stresses me out. So my crafting has not been as much of a joy and I haven't had all the energy to do it as I would like to. So I apologize for having such light content for you, but it's just the reality of the situation, people. And it's okay to be real on the channel. So it hasn't been all doom and gloom here in the D-Hard house. Um, I've also made a lot of progress in the garden. So it is springtime here in the Pacific Northwest, which is a busy time for a gardener. And I would consider myself a lowercase g gardener at this point. <laughs> uh, and so times that I would be, you know, sitting down crafting. I am choosing to spend some of that time uh, outdoors in the garden. So it hasn't been all bad. Excuse me. So my tulips um, blossomed and were absolutely gorgeous. The tulips I planted two years ago and they were huge this year. Absolutely huge. So I'm delighted that they've um, taken root, grown bigger. I make my own compost and I applied compost to the bed in hopes of feeding the tulips so they would be big and strong and they were. And all of that turned out great. Uh, we had a burst of warm summer-like weather where it got up to 80 degrees for a couple of days and then it backed down to cooler, rainy weather. <laughs> so uh, the tulips have all lost their petals. Uh, between the wind and the rain, they just, the petals got all knocked off of them. And that's okay. We're transitioning. And so um, the tulips are on their way out. The, I have a hydrangea plant that I bought on clearance uh, you know how stressed out plants they'll put on the clearance rack and so I rescued this hydrangea from the clearance rack it was not the most healthy looking plant but it has also been in for two years and it is starting to leaf up and bud up and it's looking very healthy and strong so I'm happy about that Roses I put in last year, and they have kept their leaves uh, all throughout the winter even, which surprised me. Uh, but it's it's growing out new new leaves and new buds, so that's good to see as well. The vegetable, so I grow a lot of vegetables in the backyard, so the garlic. Garlic has got to be the easiest thing to grow. <laughs> I put it in the ground in the fall and it does its own thing. It gets enough water and everything and it just grows on its own up here. It's really easy. So the garlic's fine. Peas, I put in snow peas. They're starting to come up and leaf up and grow up the trellis. So I'm excited to harvest snow, pe snow peas at some point soon. My tomato plants, I started in February, and that was way too early. And so I've moved half of the tomato plants outside at this point. I really rushed trying to harden them off. Didn't do a great job. So they're really struggling and suffering. So I sowed some more tomato seeds um, over the weekend, and whatever we'll see what happens <laughs> uh, I'm slowly planting potatoes so I put in uh, six potatoes and I waited for them to show signs of greenery popping out of the ground and that happened just a couple days ago so yesterday I put in the next batch of potatoes I'm gonna wait for them to pop up with greenery above ground and then I'll put in another batch and then this way I'll be able to space out my potato harvest instead of getting them all at once. And 
Let's see what else. I put in lettuce, kale, some of those things. They're doing all right. They're growing slowly. I feel like that's how it is with lettuce and kale is they, they grow really slowly. Then all of a sudden it seems like a huge plant. And then shortly after that, it's going to flower. <laughs> um, but yeah, I need to start thinking about squashes, cucumbers, pumpkins, uh, my pepper plants inside. Holy cow, you guys. I have tried growing peppers these past few years of living up here and... I have had no luck in growing peppers, but this year I started the peppers indoors the same time as the tomatoes, which was February, which I believe is the right time for me to start peppers indoors because it took them a while to germinate, a lot longer than the tomatoes, and they're growing a lot more slowly than the tomatoes, and they're actually six to eight inches tall now which is a good size and I put a little fan in front of them so <coughs> they can actually build up a strong sturdy stem and not just flop over in the wind when they get transplanted outside I am slowly starting to harden them off very slowly um because it's not warm enough for them to go outside yet anyway. There's no rush. But I'd like to do the, the slow roll with them. And maybe that's the way to deal with peppers. I'm very hopeful I'll actually have a pepper harvest this year. Yeah. So needless to say, um, I've been spending a lot of time crafting fruit and veg instead of garments and it's been a lot of fun uh, getting outside getting some sunlight and some fresh air uh, being able to be outside with Marjorie our dog it's been a, a good way to spend uh, an hour or two after long stressful days so I am also very thankful for my garden the fact that I have a yard so I can have a garden um, that was definitely a factor when we bought this house was I wanted a space where I could do that. So, so what else is coming down the pipeline? Well, I am working on a garden vlog for the middle of May. So in the middle of the month, I've been posting uh, garden tours. And since we're in like the busy part of spring in the garden, there's a lot going on. I figured a good way to help illustrate what's going on would be to vlog about it. So taking a video log. So I'm putting that together. That will be the next video up on the channel. I'm continuing to record my journey with my spindle spinning and knitting my skirt. Uh, but those videos won't go up until those projects actually get finished. So I'm just going to slowly continue to make progress on those things. And those featured videos will come when they are ready. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I'm just going to keep on trucking. And I'm very much looking forward to summer break when I'm off of teaching. And uh, this summer I do have to be around to work a little bit. So I won't be completely free, <laughs> but uh, it will have less responsibilities than I have now. So I'll have more brain space for, you know, taking it easy, relaxing, recharging my batteries. I will get to have a month off completely, and that will be very nice. So I have lots to look forward to and lots to do in, in the craft room here. So until next time, I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye.